Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of The Beautiful Bag Podcast. I am your host, Lee Ann Hayden, and this week, I just want to take a minute because here in the U.S., tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and I just wanted to take a minute before we talked about this episode to say thank you to every single one of you for tuning in week after week. I am so incredibly, incredibly grateful for each and every one of you, um, for those that have shared their stories, for those that are just listening and these stories have changed your lives, um, helped you in any way that it has. That is my mission. (laughs) My mission for all of us is to be able to do more, be more and live more and not let our ostomies stop us from doing so. So this week. So I just want to say thank you so much. And I am so truly, truly grateful for you as us here in the United States head into our Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, which starts tomorrow. So this week, guys, I have, um, something very special for you. I am bringing back the, an episode that was episode 27 with Geraldine Taylor. So if you have not listened to this episode, this is going to be your chance to do that this week. And then coming up next week, we have a few more brand brand new interviews coming up over the next few weeks, but this one is an oldie, but a goodie. So tune on in and um, have an amazing Thanksgiving. If you guys celebrate it. Welcome to the beautiful bag. This is your host, Leanne Hayden, cancer survivor, and more importantly, ostomy lifer. Each and every week, I'm going to be bringing a special guest or some inspiration for you and a few little stories along the way so that you can learn what life is like for us to be living in an ostomy and why we all think it's a beautiful bag. So listen in and let's get started. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's The Beautiful Bag podcast. I cannot wait for you to hear this Wonder Woman's story. Her name is Jerlene, and I had to ask her because I'm like, all right, am I saying it right? Because you guys know me, Boston at A is where they don't belong. Um, But she just has such an amazing, amazing story. Um, I'm not even going to share any of it because I want her to share it herself. So Jolene, thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And uh, I thank you for reaching out and just, um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invite. Uh, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, <laughs> I've been stalking you a little bit on social media. <laughs> started on Instagram then I moved over to Facebook and then so we're in the same group together and I'm like you know what I'm just gonna reach out to her and say hey I want your story we need to hear your story like (laughs) thank you thank you thank you I appreciate it thank you so much yeah so I mean you've your story is is pretty remarkable and you've had your ostomies Yes. Um, since you were three years old. So yes, yes, yes. Since, since three years old. And, um, you know, I tell people that really, honestly, uh, my journey, I tell people my journey started in the backyard <laughs> with this ostomy journey, because um, I was in a backyard playing with my brothers and sisters. And my oldest sister noticed that there was blood in my clothes. And um, Leanne, it just wasn't like a scrape of the knee. Let's put a bandaid over it. Mm -mm. it was um I was bleeding as though I had a menstrual and uh, yeah at three years old and so um my oldest sister of course rushed me in in the house and my parents immediately rushed me to the hospital and um it was definitely of course um you know I was so young I was just three years old Mm -hmm. you know my sister recalled to me you know it was like days of testing x-rays, MRIs, you name it. <clears throat> I, I probably had every test done because, you know, what was happening to me and being the age that I was, of course, they had no idea. Um, and again, it was just days of testing and it discovered that a, I had a rare form of cancer called rhabdomyosarcoma. And it's, it's a rare form, usually between the um, ages of kids, between the age of three to 15 years old. Again, rare type of cancer. And, and, and honestly, doctors told my parents they did not expect for me to live. Um, it was that type of rare cancer and with me being so young. And um, <clears throat> well, I'm here today talking to you. Um, so, you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, where the tumors were, you know, located in my body. And uh, of course, 
came along with chemo radiation, you know, it damaged that part of my, my area of my body, which then caused me to have an ostomy, to have ostomy surgery. And um, I actually have a colostomy and a urostomy. So I, as they call it, I'm a double bagger. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, a double, <laughs> I'm a double ostomate. And, um, and so I, we, um, it was rough for my parents, you know, just discovering that that child, first of all, developed cancer. Mm-hmm. And then to learn, you know, we're, listen, we're going to have to have sur- ostomy surgery. She's going to have to have ostomies, not just one, but two. She's going to have ostomy bags. And this is going to be for the rest of her life. So, you know, it was permanent from the beginning. Um, no reversal, um, no option for reversal. Um, not that I can recall, but um, no. So no reversal or anything like that. But The blessing part is that a year after my diagnosis, after I had chemo, I had radiation, a year after that, actually I was cancer free. And so yeah, cancer free, cancer never came back, Mm -hmm. uh, which was of course, definitely a blessing. And um, so that was, that was something that my parents was relieved about, you know, but you know, after cancer comes after. Right. Mm-hmm. And so just kind of being so small as I was, as young as I was dealing with growing up, mm-hmm. having an ostomy, not just one, but two, you know, of course, my parents did a, a great job taking care of me. You know, I actually was away from home with my treatments. I was in New York, um, Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital. That's where my treatments were. That's where my care was up until the age of about 11 or 12 years old. And I came back home with, you know, another physician, but, you know, just growing up dealing with, you know, having an ostomy again, I was so young. Yeah. Um, just kind of dealing with that and just kind of wondering, like, what is my life going to be like, you know, and you're so little, you're like, I don't even know how to take care of our ostomy. Right. I'm, I'm just learning how to tie my shoes. <laughs> right. Exactly. Figuring that yeah. out. Like, what's the rest of this stuff? Exactly. You learning how to walk. You want you, you know, just learning like you going to school and things like that. You know, of course, young like that. Again, my parents they took care of me. They changed my ostomy until you know I got old enough where they had to teach me. And you know, I had ostomy nurses, of course, um, just to kind of teach me what to do, when to change your bags and things like that. But when you're young, you young, you active. You know. And you got to start school. You got to be around your peers. And so it was kind of rough for me starting school because I'm still getting accolade. I'm still kind of learning my body, Mm -hmm. like learning like how it functions and, you know, how, again, to make sure I'm changing my bags correctly and things like that. Um, And so you you deal with being around peers. And I kind of really kind of kept to myself, especially early on, like in elementary school and things like that, just because I was like, I was like, I don't, you know, it's so unfamiliar to us, you know, it's really it's our new normal. But at the same time, it's abnormal to us, you know, until we really grasp, like, listen, you got two ostomy bags, (laughs) you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's kind of rough in, 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 in school, elementary school, because kids are going to be kids, right? Mm-hmm. And so I did, you know, you get the remarks, um, you know, I smell something, she smells like pee, I heard she wear bags, like they didn't even know what bags were, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But kids hear stuff and, you know, they might have heard it from the teacher or something like that. And so they repeat what they, but they, they smell what they smell though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it was, it was pretty rough younger, my younger years. Matter of fact, my mom took me out of school for about a year to get tutored, um, to get homeschooled just so I can get more familiar with learning how to change them, you know, yeah. when it's time and not waiting. And, you know, if you got an incident or something happened, go to the teacher, go to the nurse's office, things like that. Like I had to get really, really familiar with. So when I started like middle school, high school, I was, you know, I was fine you know, then. Right. Um, I mean, now you said you had two. So yeah. it's not just, I mean, I have one and I have a colostomy bag, right? But yeah. It's, and sometimes that smells, I mean, and you have to pay attention, right? You got to figure that yes. out. But I mean, imagine, so I can't imagine, because to me, urine smells worse than poop. 
Yes. Right. It's strong. It's yes. a stronger. Sense. It's, it's, it's actually, it's stronger. And it's so, it's so funny that you said that because, you know, both you and I, we're on several groups on Facebook, Ostomy mm-hmm. groups. And, you know, they ask like all types of questions and things like that. And someone just asked, you know, he's like, you know, I have a urosomy, but oh my gosh, it smells so bad. What can I use? You know, and things like that. So, you know, it's like a kind of like a double whammy for me, yeah. you know, um, you know, with the bowels within the urine. And so like then, you know, going to school, you know, my parents made sure I was clean. My bag changed before I went to school. But when, when you get in school, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You eat and lunch, you got to go to the bathroom. And the one thing that really did help me, I was able to use a separate uh, bathroom from all the rest of the students. Okay. And so that was kind of like something like, okay that's good, you know, but it's still at the same time, you, you just wonder just kind of being around other people. Do they smell me? Do they, you know, Well, I do that now. I mean, I sit down now sometimes I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm thinking I'm smelling me. And everybody's like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm smelling me. (laughs) Right. Exactly. You know, so I was like that in school. You yeah. know, can they smell me? Do they, can they tell, can, and can they look at me and can they tell that I have that? which they don't, but when you, you're in middle school and you're preteen and you're, you know, all types of thoughts uh, go through your mind. I can't like, even imagine that in middle school. Like, let's yeah. talk about that because that is, I mean, being a kid in elementary school is a kid in elementary school, but there's something that happens in that middle school age before you get to high school that yes. one, it's just, one, it's not easy as it is yes right? so let's talk about that like how did you get through those things because there, there's probably listeners here that are, are going through yeah. that parents that have children that are going through that and see one thing I think one thing I tell people all the time that really helped me tremendously especially middle school going into high school especially middle school were, were my parents especially my mom you know and I think what happens is because you're so young and you're going through self-esteem issues, how we already, you know, teens are already worried about how they look, my hair and things like mm-hmm. that. But of course, I had to worry about my ostomies. And, you know, one thing that helped was my mom just, she kept instilling in me. Like she kept telling me, Geraldine, you're, you're normal. You're just like everybody else. Yes, you have ostomy bags. You're beautiful from the inside out. You're going to be able to live a normal life. You know, you're going to have dreams. You're going to have aspirations. And I think a lot of times, like we, it's like a mental thing is in our mind and we think all types of things. But when you have somebody that's giving you positive, that's feeding you positive things. And, you know, my mom, we're, I mean, we're Christian. So, you know, it was her belief, you know, she was like, you know, keep the faith. Everything is going to be fine. You know, sometimes when you kill your kid, your mom tell you some things and sometimes they go in one ear and sometimes it'll go out the ear. We want to hear what we want to hear. But oh, I think, like, mom, you know, we're like, oh, okay, mom, okay. You're my mom. You've got to say that. You're my mom. <laughs> right, exactly. But that was one thing that really helped me, you okay. know, it was that encouragement. And one thing my parents said, even though you know, I was sick as a child, yeah, I had ostomies. One thing that, that my parents said, they treated me normal. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was five of us siblings, you know, yep. but they treated me normal. They didn't treat me as I was a sick child or I was a child that had, you know, had ostomies, you know, they just treated me normal. And I think that really helped me, you know, even though I've still had some struggles, some, you know, some self-esteem struggles and, you know, loving myself, you know, because I, I had to learn, like they can tell me all day and they can talk to me. But you got to grasp that, Mm -hmm. you know, you got to you got to take that internally and you have to embrace it. And I just started embracing it, you know, just the things that she was telling me, you know. And and another thing is, you know, like my parents listen, you know, Mm because sometimes I was the type of person that kept things in. You know, I didn't like talk about it. And, you know, it was that reassurance from my mom. Like, if you need to talk about it, you know, I'm here to listen. Um, you know, my oldest siblings, they were there, um, you know, to listen. And again, I still kept some things in, I, I, you know, I kept some things in, didn't talk about it, but it was their encouragement that, that helped me get through, um, those middle school years. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) You know, and I had friends in middle school, you know, didn't have a whole lot. I mean, it was a lot of friends, but you know, I was still the type of person I just kind of wanted to stay to myself. 
-hmm. just because I was in that state, like, can they smell me? Can they see, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. You know, yes. so <laughs> it's a true real estate. And it, that, that happens regardless of the age. I mean, everybody I've talked to has that, has that feeling, has that fear and most yeah. times, no, they can't smell you. And most times right. they, they can, no, they can't see it and they can't smell it. Right. Right. And I think it's, I think it's a part of too, um, you know, with me just going through those insecurities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and just again, because as a teen, your, your body is developing, you're growing, mm -hmm. you're, you're maturing, you know, and so mm -hmm. all of that comes along with just growing, <laughs> period. Right. You and know. then you add everything else on, and you add the other things on top. Add, you yeah, add that on top of that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you got to figure it out. So you get through school, you have great friends, you have great parents and siblings. And, you know, let's talk about like your life, like what mm -hmm. you're, you're modeling, you've modeled, yeah. you're, yeah. you're out there. Yeah. Let's talk about all of that. Like, you know, Leah, for a long time, I, I did not, probably honestly, not until I was like an adult mm -hmm. that I started sharing um, my ostomy journey. And, um, you know, back when I was in middle school, even like high school, very, very few people knew, very few people knew. And really, guess what? It was my big secret. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't talk about it. You know, it was just, that, that was just my business, right? And that's your and, right. And, you know, and not until I was an adult. And one thing, m both my parents have passed away now, but one thing my mom told me, and I'll never forget, she was like, Geraldine you're going to have to share your story. Right. And back then I still was, I was like, no, I'm not talking about it. I don't want to talk about it. You know, this is just me. I want to keep it to myself. And of course, back then I didn't understand right back then why she kept telling me to share um, my story. And she knew, mm -hmm. I didn't know back then, but she knew it would make a difference. And then, you know, when I became an adult, I'm just like, and I had a friend in the neighborhood, he, um, his church had a newsletter. They did a newsletter at their church. And um, since we grew up together, he knew all about it. He's like, Geraldine, hey, listen, I want to, can I tell your story a little bit, you know, in my newsletter, give it out to the people at church so they can read your story, your testimony. I'm like, uh, Mark, um, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> right. like, how about no? Like, I don't know. And he's like, yeah, just. You know, you know, you know, just tell a little excerpt of it. And, uh, you know, I told a little bit to him. He wrote it up and put it in his church newsletter. And the response that I got really then changed my mind about telling my story because it was such a positive reaction. You know, I don't know why I thought people might think negative. Or people, people still to this daily, and you know they don't even know what an ostomy is or ostomy surgery is. They don't. <laughs> they have no idea. My husband still he he says I have a tube coming out of my stomach when he talks to people. I'm like, we have no tube. Right. Like, my intestines hanging out. Like I'm, like, I, can, I can look like The Walking Dead if I want to. <laughs> yes. No, it's, it's like it's not true. Like, right. And so in the midst of telling my story, of course, I had to kind of really educate people too, like what, what an ostomy is and people and, and that they say, till this day, they still say it like, Geraldine, you don't, you don't look like, you know, you have an ostomy, you know, of course we don't look like it. We just walking around just normal, but it was during that time that I started coming out and I started sharing and people started, it was just such a positive reaction. And People just gave me that, like the encouragement and the inspiration. And, and by that time I was growing in my faith, I was growing in church. And I just believe, you know, I just kind of discovered like, we all born with a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I just discovered like, this was my purpose, Leanne. My purpose it was and still is to share um, my story, my journey, um, just to give that inspiration and that empowerment and kind of like allow other people to share their story too. Maybe their story is not, they haven't asked me. It might be like they're a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. It might be whatever medical circumstances, but maybe they've gone through depression, gone through not loving themselves. And I'm like, hey, I, been, I went through that, mm -hmm. you know? 
maybe mm-hmm. I'm, you know, that ideal person to talk about it, even though I'm incorporating having an ostomy, but all those other things came with it. The depression, not loving yourself and feeling rejected and alone. And will somebody love me? And will I be married one day? You know what I mean? So all yeah. those things, you know, I'm like, well, let me, let me just start sharing and just kind of really honestly putting myself out there. You know, it was kind of no long, it was about me, but it wasn't. It was about touching other people, especially the ostomy community, mm-hmm. you know, because of, a lot of us in the Osami community, it's, it's a wonder, it's a, I tell people, I was like, y'all just don't know how large our community is. The Osami community is so large. There's like, so many, Jolene, there's, so, I can't believe, like, it was shocking to me. Yes. The amount yes. of people that are in Ostomies. And I'm like, wait, like, I thought I was all on my own. Like, <laughs> right. Yes. Like, and I'm, I'm on my own and I'm not the, like, the, the. The, the tens and hundreds of thousands of people. Yes. But how yes. Is it's not just an old person's. I when I, had I know it, it was an old person's thing. I had to tell people. I was like, no, it's just not old people. It's not. Mm-hmm. And I said, people have asked me, sir, you ask me for whatever medical reason it may be. Um, but when I got involved with the ostomy community, but and I, and I discovered it's it's a lot of us that still is still not still not there yet. Mm-hmm. They don't want to talk about it. They don't don't want to come out the house unless it's a doctor's appointment. Mm-hmm. They feel as though they can't, you know, wear this or they can't wear that. They just we're dealing with a lot, you know, and we, we've been there and done that and still go through some struggles. But I felt as though that I can bring something different to the ostomy community. I wanted to bring to people like we can live, we can do, we can be, we can dress, we can <laughs> have jobs, you know, we can play sports, you know, we can do everything. Everything. <laughs> we can swim. We can, we can swim. Yeah. We can do we can do anything. We can be models. We can be models, <laughs> right? We can do anything <laughs> that we want to do. Yeah. It does not matter. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I just like listen, I gotta, you know, I gotta just spread the word just you know let people know we're we're not defined by our ostomies right Mm -hmm. and I tell people often listen my ostomy helped my health circumstances it it did it it helped it it might sometimes say it may have saved my life right Mm -hmm. but my ostomies does not dictate who I am um it does not dictate what I can be and who I can be Mm -hmm. and I often say that we are more than our ostomies Mm -hmm. you know I tell people listen it's permanent my ostomy's not going nowhere that's it you know (laughs) not coming off your body it's not coming off my body back in there's none of that it's none of that and even though I've had mine for now going on 51 years since I was three years old yeah I still have like challenges matter of fact I had to come home early from work today because I had a leak (laughs) and so I'm like huh what and so people's like, oh, how, what do you, what do you get sad? I was like, no, listen, I come home, shower, clean myself up and keep going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't say stuff in, oh, I had a leak or I had a blowout. It's going to happen. We hope that it doesn't happen. We hope that it doesn't happen when we're in public or anything like that, but it could happen. And I think what happens is what's your reaction going to be? You know, don't get down. Don't get depressed. It is what it is. And you just do what you have to do. You go clean yourself up, put a new bag on. That's it. And I know everybody is not there because people are just, some people just getting an ostomy surgery for the first time, you know, and these type of surgeries go on every day. Somebody's getting an ostomy surgery now. Right. It's, it's like multiple times in the day. I forget. It was like every, like every couple of minutes. Mm. It was something that was absolutely crazy to me when I started doing a little more research in the numbers mm. after, cause I wasn't paying, you know, mine was cancer and I had no, I couldn't, I was like, it's not happening. Don't put me in there. And it, and it, and it happened and I don't, yeah. but you know, it's just amazing to me, the amount of people, the amount of people. So now, yeah. you, so, you know, you've gone on 51 years of living in this, you've lived a, you're living a full on life. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah. modeling like yeah yeah and, and that was that? Basically, I did not grow up wanting to be a model matter of fact I had a double career I was in um hotel and hospitality and I was a hairstylist for 17 years mm-hmm. um and so I actually work for a healthcare company now but I never grew up wanting to be a model I didn't I honestly in the mall one day 
And um, someone came up to me and was like, hey, we're having some modeling workshop classes. We're having an open house. Would you like to come? And I was very familiar with the modeling company. Mm-hmm. Leanne, I'm in a mall. I'm listening to the person. He's steady talking, talking about to pass me out, a, a, you know, some a literature about it. And I'm thinking in my mind, um, modeling and not just one, but two Oscars <laughs> now, n- now, n- no. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I'm like modeling. I was like, uh, yeah, that ain't gonna happen. But because I was familiar with the company, I went to the open house and I only went to listen to what they had to say. And they talked about everything, modeling, <clears throat> making money, fashion shows, all types of things, the ins and outs about modeling and stuff like that. And I'm still thinking, I'm listening, but I'm still like modeling and two ostomies. That's like, that's just not going to go. But what I decided to do, Lynn, was try something I never did before. I said, okay, Geraldine, your mom talked about, you know, teaching you about faith and having faith. So now you need to put your faith into action. Do something you never did before. See, first of all, just do it and see if you like it. You know, you never know you're going to like something until you try it. And so I decided (laughs) to try it. And they had like workshop classes. You would go every Saturday. You had an instructor and just teach you how to walk, how to, you know, everything about modeling, posing, all kinds of stuff. And so I went, it was like probably like maybe a six week course, something like that. And I went and guess what? I liked it. Yay! And um, <laughs> it turned into a passion. Mm-hmm. I really, really liked it. And I was excited about going every Saturday. But then my instructor's like, and I, I started progressing I, because I like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do good. I'm gonna be top of the class. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but then the instructor's like, okay, Geraldine, we're gonna start putting you in showcases. So now I'm thinking, okay, you put me in a showcase. So that means I got to, what am I going to wear? Like I was, and I never told the instructor initially mm-hmm. about me, about having ostomies. I did because I wanted like to do something where my ostomy wasn't the focus. Right. And so I decided I'm not going to tell him initially, not until he said, <laughs> we're going to stop putting you in some fashion shows. And I'm thinking fashion shows, that mean uh, I'm going to be wearing designer clothes. Hopefully they're not telling me to get in a bathing suit, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I'm getting a little like stressed out. Like, look, you didn't got into something that you wanted to try. Now, okay, these are some challenges or these are some things that you're gonna face when you're a model. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, Geraldine, what model goes into the industry and say I can't wear this or I can't wear that? Mm-hmm. You know. And I finally told my instructor, you know, uh, educated him about you know asking me and things like that. And one thing he told me, and I will never ever ever forget. He said, Geraldine. Your talent speaks for itself. Wow. I'm not worried about your ask me. Just tell me, okay, what do I have to do? What what clothes can you not wear or whatever? And you know, and we became real, really, really close, you know. And he was like, your talent speaks for itself. Take take your focus off of that. I, I'll work with you. You know, if there's something you can't wear, if you can't wear a bikini, okay, I'm not gonna put you in it. You know, um, and so um, I just kind of really, honestly, I found a little trick of the trade with modeling. I already wear high waist undergarments anyway. Mm-hmm. That worked for me with modeling, still do to this day. Mm-hmm. You know, it does. And so thank I, God for those space. What? <laughs> yes. Keep look, we ain't keep yes. your in place. Don't you move? <laughs> <laughs> <See? And> so, <laughs> That's why you see them little pictures of mine. I'm like, yeah, them, um, them high waist. <laughs> uh-huh. Get that in there. Give me yes. that. One. <laughs> Come on, bring it in. You know, and um, I just found little things to do. You know, of course, the high waist, um, making sure if I have a photo shoot or a, a fashion event, making sure what I'm eating, that my, my colostomy is not being busy, you mm-hmm. know, and um, just kind of different things, making sure I'm draining my, my urostomy bag because with my urostomy, my urine never stops. Right. So it's constant. And so making sure that's drained, um, not drinking a whole lot to make me go to the bathroom, you know, and so just found little things that would help with my modeling, but it progressed it. Um, it grew. 
Um, and um, I've been doing it for now about, I think, 20 years now. And I still have, I still have a passion for it. I still have a passion for it. I, you know, it's still, I, I mean, I always say, listen, um, dreams doesn't have an age limit. You know, it doesn't. And so, you know, it's, it wasn't a dream of mine growing up, but now, you know, I dream of bigger things as far as modeling. I, you know, I've done a whole lot. I've been in magazines. I've been on television. I've been on, matter of fact, I just got an email last week. I'll be back on uh, my city largest billboard again. Um, but this is the first time, and I've been on my billboard before here in my city, but this is the first time that I sent in a picture actually showing my ostomies. Wow. And so this is something big for me. So this is like, this is up in the city. Everybody's going to see it. So I'm like, they probably like, oh, what's that? But then they're probably like, oh my gosh, you know? And so it's a little scary because normally I'm just taking like regular editorial pictures but this time I'm like oh I really exposed myself yeah you did but that's you okay know? that's yeah. a good thing so you know I'm just I'm you know I'm happy <clears throat> where I am now <clears throat> in my life you know and um I'm just you know I always tell people and I tell everybody we're all different to make a difference mm -hmm. what what is the difference that you're making in your life you know what are you putting out in the world and the universe you know what difference are you making? And, and, you know, it's just like, well, drilling, you making a difference, uh, you know, talking about your ostomy journey, mm -hmm. you know, but it's an inspiration to a lot of people, um, you know, not just the ostomy community, but just a lot of people that I encounter. I love traveling, sharing my story, you know, um, talking to you, Leanne, you know, mm -hmm. I talk to different bloggers and you know, different um, companies and things like that. Ostomy companies, you know, they have me to come in and, and share my journey. And I got involved with a camp called, um, I don't know if you ever heard of Youth Rally, mm -hmm. um, but Youth Rally has been around for like 40 years. <clears throat> and Youth Rally actually found me. I was speaking at a conference <clears throat> and actually the director was there. And Youth Rally is a, a rally for kids and um, they're between the age of, 11 and 17 years old. Okay. And what it is, it's a camp that um, deals with uh, all kids that has some type of medical, um, like bowel or stomach or digestive. Um, several of them have ostomies, but um, this camp where they, and it's on the West Coast, they have it at three different, um, th three different places on the West Coast. And I've been going for about three years now. Um, the first year I was a speaker and then they got me involved in a fashion show, but to see these kids come together that shared their journey because they're walking in each other's shoes. Mm -hmm. Like when I was younger, I never went to any support groups. I, I just didn't, didn't know about them. You probably didn't we, know. didn't, we didn't know about them. And right. so when I went to youth rally for the first year, I, I thought I was one of the campers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I thought I look, I'm supposed to be speaking and I'm supposed to be a, a counselor in training, and I thought I was one of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> because well, you really wanted to be, right? <laughs> oh my, I wanted to be. And they have like different workshop classes, they do different things, they do activities, they have a talent show, fashion show, um, they go to the park, just different things that they do. But just to see them, these kids, they come together every year. Like they see their best friend every year. Um, they're able to share and um, they have like little small breakout rooms. It's, I mean, it was really mind blowing to me. And like I said, they had been around for, I mean, like years. Um, but again, um, they found me and I found them. Yep. And so, but yeah, definitely it's called Youth Rally. Um, definitely look them up. Yeah, please look them up. And maybe it might be someone from there you might want to, talk to but yeah it's it's an awesome awesome camp and they have of course they have counselors and of course they have nurses <clears throat> um, that attend the camp you know because it could be up to a hundred I know last year before COVID it was like 135 kids you know wow. at camp and we stay at an, um, a university or a college um, and that's where we stay for a week that's wonderful oh that's yeah wonderful. That's yeah, it's, so it's things like that that I have encountered, you know, just my adult years, recent years, 
um, just sharing my ostomy journey and the different people that I have encountered, yeah. you know, and so it's, it's really, really, you know, a blessing. And, you know, I say now that, listen, you know, there was a purpose through all the pain and the cancer and it, it was going to be a purpose for it, for it all, you know, because sometimes we look back and I used to say, and I struggled with this for a long time, asking why me, mm-hmm. you know? I, I did. I was like, why me? Why cancer? Why the bags? Why, you know, I always question why me? And then now later in life and, you know, my faith walk, I was like, well, why not me? Mm-hmm. Why not you, Leanne, to have an it's a outlet like this where you can interview people, where they can share, you know, their ostomy journey, you know? So, you know, we question why me, but why not me? Why can't I, I can make a difference? You know, I'm just making a difference in a different way, you know, exactly. and so, yeah. So again, it's, it's, it's really, it's really been a blessing. It's yeah. really, really, yeah. I love your story and, and what you're doing is unbelievable. And thank you. We're truly grateful to have you in the community. If you were to, let's just say you were to leave the, the listeners with just one last thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would- um, this is something I say to myself and I have sticky notes around my house, um, I am not defined by my circumstances. And so you are not defined, listeners, you are not defined by your circumstances. You are not your circumstances. You can still do, be, and live your life to the fullest in spite of, Mm -hmm. right? And so that in spite of, in spite of your sickness, in spite of your ostomies, in spite of your diagnosis, you still can do, be, and live your life to the fullest. You are not your circumstances. Uh, Jarlene, thank you <laughs> so, so much for having, us, for having us, for being here with us this week. Uh, it truly has been inspiring. And I thank you. Story. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you. Appreciate you having me. You know, I never take for granted, you know, um, you know, when people ask me, I'm, I'm always saying yes, but, <laughs> you know, but when you, you know, when you've been through something in your life and <clears throat> now you're comfortable with your own story, mm-hmm. when you're comfortable with your own story and sharing it, you know, um, and not for glitz and glam and things like that. No, you share it because you want to make a difference, you know? And so that's, that's my purpose. <clears throat> I'm different to make a difference. Listeners, you're different to make a difference. Oh, I love it. Thank you again so much. (laughs) You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, I hope you were inspired by that one. I am grateful as always to have you here with me each and every week. Thank you so much for doing so. Please head on over to iTunes or Spotify or Google Play, wherever you are listening to this podcast from. Hit subscribe, catch up on some old podcasts, and please, if you would, leave a rating and a review. It would mean the absolute world to me. Again, thank you for joining me this week, and I will catch you again next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, people.